On today's Fit to Eat, I'll be preparing chicken tacos with a corn and bean relish and homemade salsa. My guest is Chef Mark Koblenz, who's been a contestant on the major network shows Master Chef Junior and Chop Junior. Registered dietitian Rebecca Turner will share some tips on buying eggs. It's going to be an incredible show. Stay tuned. Welcome to Fit to Eat. I'm your host, Rob Stenson. Today, my guest is a young and upcoming chef who's competed on Master Chef Junior and Chop Junior, Chef Mark Koblenz. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Chef. Oh, I'm so excited, man. You are absolutely the youngest person ever on the show <laughs> and probably the most talented cook, Thank too. you. Thank so you. this is going to be a blast. I'm very much looking forward to this. All right. Well, this what we're going to do is take kind of a, a classic Mexican dish mm -hmm. and make it healthy. Mm, I know. That sounds good. I know. I know. And, and I tell you what, let's take one big panoramic shot of this food. You got to admit, man, that's just some beautiful, colorful food. It looks food. like the color of spring. I, mean, I know. Huh? I love springtime, too. Isn't it, isn't it incredible? Mm. And I tell you what, it's just, it's really neat. We're going to get into your story because you have such an incredible tale. Thank you. And, and I love it because you and I have a lot in common. <laughs> I started cooking at a very young age, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we're going to have a good time. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is actually get you kind of involved on this first phase. We're going to actually do the chicken taco, what will go inside mm -hmm. first. Okay. Okay? So obviously the first thing we're going to do is take our chicken, I'm going to season it just with a little pepper. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't do a lot of seasoning. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was something interesting you said about not liking a lot of coriander, oh, not yeah. liking a lot of overspice yeah. and all that. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> and we're going to take a little touch of canola oil. And yep, if you move it around the pan, look at this guy. Man, this is, this is going to be my <laughs> easiest show ever, gang. All right. And then if you would, just go ahead and place those three chicken breasts in the pan. Because we're going to throw everything else in there with it. Okay. And then after the fact, we'll bring it out and kind of cut it to go into the dishes. All right, so how about we start with our onion first. Mm. Nice julienne red onion. Some red bell pepper. And I'll grab these empties when you're done. That's okay. Don't worry about that. Some green bell pepper just to give it some really pretty color and some yellow. I love the color in this. I know, huh? Uh-huh, I mean. And, and, and I tell you what, this is stuff that everybody can get in any store. You know, any citrus store has mm, it. Yeah. How about we put a little garlic in there as mm. well? I can already smell it already. I know, isn't that great? It's so aromatic. I, you know, the one thing that people can't get when they're watching TV is that the aromatic smell. side, yes. I know, and when you're cooking on <laughs> in it, in it a blast. Mm, uh -huh. I mean, someone make a lot of money in the smells, smell of vision. Smell of vision. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. So listen, what I, what I wanted to ask you though is, how did you get started mm. at such a young age on doing this? Because we're going to have that chicken cooking and it'll mm. be good. Uh, so I really got started from learning from my mom and my grandmothers. Um, one of my grandmothers really does a lot of homemade rolls, and so I helped her. And my mom, she was a big influence in my life. Uh, she cooks just about every weeknight, and um, I just kind of picked it up from there. I studied a lot. I read a lot of cookbooks, uh, and I just experimented with different things. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to say it this way. My mother passed away this past year. I'm sorry. And I love you, my mother. I love you. You know I do. But she was a terrible cook. So I started cooking at a young age because mm. my mother wasn't a good cook. So you, you and I are kind of on opposite sides that way. Yeah, my, my mother's a very talented cook. Well, you know, I think the neat part about it is it's such a great profession. Mm -hmm. And you may find now that this may be the profession you want to go into. Uh, that's what I'm really leaning forward to. I enjoy cooking. It's, it's a passion of mine. It's an art form, and I really enjoy that. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I, um, 
I have six restaurants. Wow. I got into it at a young age, and I fell in love with it, and mm. I was in school to actually be a doctor. <laughs> so the irony of it all is that this wasn't my plan. Uh -huh. So you having a plan at this age, you, you're ahead of the game. Wow. You really are. And if, let's take, let's turn this one down over here. And I think we're at a point where we can. Oh, that's perfect. beautiful color on it. Perfect, perfect, yep. Those look great. They're starting to get a little black around the edges. Yep, I think, yep, mm -hmm. exactly. My favorite part about a lot of Mexican food, I love fajitas. Um, the blackened edges on like the onions and, and the bell peppers. I know, and it really, it, it makes all the difference. Uh -huh. You know, people ask me all the time in the restaurant, mm -hmm. why is the food different? You know the real reason is because people are scared to cook it too mm -hmm. hot in their house. Yeah, exactly. You know, they don't get their pan hot enough. Mm -hmm. don't, I mean, Yeah, it, I, I've done that a lot of times. I, I'm not even going to lie about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. isn't that something though? Mm -hmm. It's really kind of neat. So what we're doing really right now is just basically kind of getting all the veggies. I'm gonna let you keep, man, you were doing so okay. good. I'm gonna let you move that all around. I love this. This could be my <laughs> easiest show ever. Um, I actually have got a talented chef cooking with me. And can you believe it? 14 <laughs> years old. Unbelievable. Well, I guess my, my, my luck is I've been cooking for almost all my life because I'm so young. <laughs> That's right. You know, you're right. You're right. You know, so we're going to let this kind of go through and, and what you're doing right now. Let me, let me ask you this. How, how hard was it competing on TV? Well, I mean, that was extremely difficult with chopped and with MasterChef. They usually have, like, mystery ingredients. Chopped was crazy. I mean, four ingredients, and we had to make a dish in Did 30 minutes. Did you know minutes. what they were? Oh, no, no clue at all. <laughs> no clue at all. You, you know what, though? Isn't that, that's the key, mm. honestly, in being a chef. There are often times where I have not any mm -hmm. idea where I'm going with food. But you gotta the fact, wing it. Right, but the, right, the, you wing it, you mm -hmm. do, you do. That's how he, some of the, my best dishes are made, actually. That's <laughs> awesome. Listen, hey, by the way, okay, lots of fresh ingredients here. You're never gonna remember them all. So go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat, or better yet, join the MPB Facebook page where you can find all of this. And this one, this is going to be one for the record book. Mm -hmm. You guys have got to come back and make sure you have this. I, I, I'm Mark, it's just so thrilling to have somebody who is so passionate at your age. And I mean that. I really mean that. Well, you know? thank you. I mean, it's such a compliment coming from you. You're no, no, you're you have no idea. I made my <laughs> first menu when I was like 10 years old. Me and too. and my my best dish. All right, you're gonna laugh. <laughs> I made hot dogs a la Normandy, <laughs> and they were hot dogs that I sliced on the edges. So when you boiled them, they curled up in a ball. Uh -huh. I put them on a hamburger bun with cheese and bacon in the middle, and I thought I made a gourmet <laughs> dish. You know, it was like unbelievable. My favorite um, meal, home cooked meal, is one my mom introduced: hot dog spaghetti, <laughs> canned tomato sauce. You spice it up a little bit. Hot dogs, you boil, and noodles, you just mix it all together. It is so good, so simple. I made it last week. I mean, So I, even though you're still cooking gourmet food right now. All right, wait, let me tell you. This guy was in Las Vegas cooking for some celebrities, and he was actually thrilled to make hot dog spaghetti yes. pasta. That's, that's incredible. It is, it's, once you try it, you can't go back, is what I like to say. <laughs> no, I, I think it's really a neat, it, it, it's just, it, your story is just one of those that I relate to very much, mm. so it's really mm. kind of cool. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to finish cooking the chicken portion of this, and then that, we're going to take the chicken off and let it rest before we slice it, right? Mm -hmm. So that way it doesn't lose all its um, juice. Juices. And, and this young guy actually knows all that, which is really impressive. <laughs> I, I've, you, I've cut into steaks and chickens a little too early before, and it, yeah, yeah, it's not it that good. It doesn't work out well. But, <laughs> but the nice part is, look at it right now. Everything has still got a little it's crispness to it. Yep, and it's just about ready, so we're doing really well. Um, you know, the other side Perfect. is, you know, my thought, where will you open your first restaurant? Uh, so I'm from Starkville, Mississippi, so kind of uh, to pay back my town for all the love they give me, I, want, I really want to open one up in the historic uh, Cotton District right in the middle of Mississippi State University. How cool. <laughs> my really main goal is to open up a restaurant in every state in the South, maybe some of them too. That's but uh, awesome. that's going to take a lot of hard work. Well, you know what, I, I can tell you this, I've opened 37 restaurants 
Once you start, it's addictive. <laughs> it really is. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven restaurants. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, and and it it is just one of those kind of enthralling things once you get into it. Mm -hmm. But the idea that you have, you know, loving what you're mm -hmm. doing, it's going to make it easy. I really believe you're going to do great at it. Okay, you know, it looks like we're doing really well here. All right, we're going to take a short break and go to registered dietitian Rebecca Turner. She's got some easy tips on buying eggs. We'll be right back. Come on back. Whether you take your eggs scrambled, over easy, sunny side up, or boiled, this versatile food can be a staple in a healthy diet. As a registered dietitian who has a few chickens of her own, let me explain why I believe the entire egg is good for your health. Recently, health professionals around the world recalled the need to limit egg intake due to dietary cholesterol. In other words, eggs are back. And egg protein gets a gold star for its high quality, providing all the essential building blocks needed to maintain, repair, and rebuild lean muscle mass. There is six grams of protein found in each egg. And since the protein is stored in the egg white, where none of the dietary fat is found, you can enjoy extra egg whites to a whole egg for more powerful nutrition per meal. But which egg should you buy? Cage-free, all natural, no antibiotics, what's the difference? Egg cartons today boast numerous of attention-grabbing phrases. While some are highly regulated government certifications, others are subject to just mere scrutiny. In other words, they can mean a whole lot of nothing. Egg labels that actually mean nothing with no regulation are all natural, farm fresh, or no hormones. Now, egg labels that have some regulation but can be truly misleading, cage-free, free-range, or pasture-raised. Now, egg labels with true merit are your gradings, which are found from the USDA AA, A, or B grade. This is just for overall quality. USDA Organic actually goes through a rigorous certification to get that label. You can always visit your farmer's market and talk to the farmer on how they choose to raise their chickens and eggs. Keep these buying tips in mind and your eggs will be fit to eat. All right, welcome back. We're going to put together the corn and bean relish. Ooh. Now this is a hot corn and bean relish. That, that's what you this do. This is like something I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people when they go to Mexican restaurants, they love kind of the, the refried beans mm, yeah. or the black beans. Mm -hmm. But to me, I always like something when it's a little crunchy. I, I agree all the way. I mean, texture makes a makes or breaks a dish. I think. I uh, honestly, I mean, that's just that's just I think what it's all about. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start again, and remember, we're focused on fat or mm -hmm. lack thereof. A mm -hmm. half a teaspoon of oil. And now I'm going to add, I'm going to give you the ingredients to start with. So we're going to start with some diced red bell pepper. And this is a fun one. Some, some white beans. Okay. Some black beans. All right. Some garlic. Got to have garlic, mm -hmm. huh? Yes, sir. Black pepper. All right, now here, I'm going to give you the option on this because you made a comment to me that you went crazy about cumin. This is cumin, so there's a spoon, and you choose what we put in there. Yeah, that's one of the main reasons I grew up not liking tacos a whole lot, but there needs to be some Mexican uh, homage to it. I, I, I agree, you know, and, and obviously that's too much, so you know what, it's gone. <laughs> All right, so now the next part of this obviously is the corn. And I'm going to do this just because I know you can probably do this <laughs> but you might, you don't without trust hurting me. yourself. But it would be my luck to have you get bloodshed <laughs> on my show, which is not going to happen. So what I'm doing is cutting the corn right off the cob of some beautiful fresh corn. Mm. And there's just nothing better than getting it fresh, huh? Oh, I agree. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love summertime, eating corn off the cob. But I have braces now. For the next year and a half, I can't eat corn on the cob. Oh, man. I can, oh. We can cut it off the cob, but it's just not the same. No, it really isn't. But, you know, at least if you do it this way. So let's go ahead. I'm going to let you just throw all of that in there. Mm. And there's nothing better than just beautiful fresh mm -hmm. corn. So now we've got kind of a nice mixture going on of garlic and all of those flavors of the beans, that fresh corn. 
You know, it's it's amazing having somebody who actually can handle a saute pan. No, you the only no thing idea. I'm afraid no. of is you're, flipping you're, it over, though. No, you're you're literally the first person I've had on the show that could. All right, so here, here's what I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a trick on that. We're gonna add in some green onion and then save a little bit for the very end. Oh, that smells amazing. And I didn't put this into the ingredient list. But the one thing that we really need is a little white wine <laughs> to get all of that off the pan. Little so I'm going to let you deglaze it with that white wine. And then, yeah, then it'll be a whole lot easier to actually flip the pan the way you want. And look how pretty that is, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Beautiful color. Sa same thing, springtime. Yep, it really is. All that burnt stuff on the bottom I'm ripping off. It oh. looks great. It's so I, colorful. Uh, I can't get over how colorful it is. All right, now I'm going to steal those tongs, take this, and start working so we have our chicken sliced for our tacos. And gang, you know, the one thing, and Mark, this is something you're young and maybe not as familiar, but portion control. Mm -hmm. People eat too much. Yes. So a big part of our show is to try and get people, I'm gonna throw the rest of those green onions in there while you're stirring that around. A big part of our show is to try and realize that people eat too large of a portion yeah. in general. And, and so we're doing these three chicken breasts and these are actually half chicken breasts, mm -hmm. but for one taco, I mean, that's plenty. That's, yeah. mm -hmm. that's plenty. And that'll fill and, me and up. And that's, that's exactly what we're gonna have here when we're done are the exact perfect portions, if you look at it, of cut chicken for three tacos. And, and guess what? <laughs> what? You get to eat one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. You were just saying you were a little hungry when you I smelled mean, the food. I'm trying my best not to reach over and just grab a handful of all those <laughs> perfectly cooked bell peppers, but. I know, that is the hard part being uh, in the restaurant business, oh, too. Man. I'm gonna cut that heat down. I think we're good there. But the irony of all of this is that what we're gonna end up doing is putting a little bit of this. Now the one ingredient I haven't talked about, fresh avocado. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put a little garnish of fresh avocado on each taco. You're gonna have your roasted peppers and everything that's in there. Just a touch of fat-free <laughs> sour cream and lettuce on the side. And the only thing, you know, people like pico de gallo. Mm -hmm. What I thought would be fun is when we come back, we're gonna make a fresh salsa, Ooh. which has fresh chopped tomatoes mm -hmm. in it. And that will kind of take the place of needing to make a pico de gallo. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do this in a whole different way than <laughs> I bet you've ever seen. Uh, so I'm, actually, I'm ready. I mean, it's actually got applesauce in it. Ooh, I'm gonna put you to work slicing some jalapenos <laughs> so they can see how talented you are with a knife. But we got fresh cilantro, onion, lemon, lime, garlic, applesauce, fresh. jalapeno, tomato, and then when we finish this and we put it all together with the avocado, the tacos are gonna be incredible. I'm looking forward to this. All these fresh flavors in one big, it's gonna be culinary bombshell, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that? A culinary bombshell. You don't get any better than that. I mean, this is what we're really doing. Not the trademark hat. Good. Yeah. <laughs> He's obviously got a huge future on food TV, Thank I you. swear to God. I mean, seriously, Mark, what, what, what amazing talent. All right, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'm gonna finish off with the homemade salsa that we were just talking about. It's really easy to make, so stay tuned. We started with a small garden, a backyard garden, um, selling to farmer's markets, and then saw the potential to, to grow it using a CSA model. And uh, based off that, we, we're, we're here now, growing on about 20 acres. We grow probably about 30 different crops, about 100 different varieties, and each year we're always trying something di different, um, trying to do something unique, um, different from what other people are doing to kind of separate ourselves. It's my wife and I and our, our young daughter, Hazel, who's two, so she's, she's in the mix every day, uh, either helping pack or pick or loading up the truck for delivery, so it's fun. We love it. CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And uh, it's basically a subscription-based program where a community, um, family members in the community invest in your farm or they, they pay you to grow their food. And um, with that investment, they get um, harvest of your, a, a weekly harvest of your farm. Um, 
So each week they get a box of produce, whatever's coming out of the field, it's fresh, usually eight to 10 items. It really helps us get um, some operating money up front when we're not really have anything growing, we're just planting, uh, putting fertilizers out, um, you know, burning diesel fuel, and, and we, don't, we don't have any product to sell, so that money helps us get going in the, in the beginning of the year. I think it, uh, it's just kind of uh, unique that people are, are able to, are willing to invest in the local farmer um, so he can, he can be successful and get his, his product into the local restaurants, into the, the farm to table movement. Welcome back. I think it's time we put this all together, huh? I am ready. I am definitely I, I, ready. I think you're going to enjoy eating this more than any of my guests ever have. So what we're going to do is make our salsa. Okay. Okay. This is really different. Okay. All right. Typically, salsa's got a lot of oil. It's got mm -hmm. a lot of things that are not really healthy. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is put the tomatoes fresh chopped. Mm, yeah. And then I'm going to have you stir this up as we go with applesauce. Wow. Is, is Applesauce is really a good uh, substitute for oil, isn't it? Uh, abs I use apple juice in Caesar dressing. Mm. I use apple sauce if I want to thicken something mm -hmm. like oil. Mm -hmm. Little fresh minced garlic. Chopped onion. So this is kind of where that idea of almost being like a pico, pico de, de gallo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cilantro, you got to have cilantro. A little bit of green, a lot of red. Yep. A squeeze of lemon and lime. This smells directly like pico de gallo. I know. Doesn't it though? Mm -hmm. And especially now with this, with the with the citrus oh going my in there. Goodness. And I'm just making sure I don't get any seeds. <laughs> that would be All pretty right. bad. A little bit of black pepper in there, and you'll keep stirring that if you would. Let's get rid of all of that. And then here, obviously, is the the kicker that you have to have in pico de gallo. You have to have jalapenos. Some jalapenos. You absolutely have to. And I have already taken the liberty of seeding them, mm -hmm. and I cut them really, really small. And we really only need about a tablespoon at the most. I don't know. Will you like spicy? I like spicy. You like spicy? Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little bit more. All right. And then, you know, you were asking why I use a cleaver. <laughs> Here's why. It becomes like your, your tool that you can use for everything, mm -hmm. you know? So you well, keep mm -hmm. stirring that up. What I'm going to do is start actually plating some of this beautiful food. And you know what? I might even take these jalapenos and use them as a garnish at the end. All right. So we've got two on our main plate, one for you. <laughs> yeah. That's an evil laugh he's got. All right, we're going to take and put our chicken in each taco. And I love to just kind of do these open face. So show, that way you just kind of make them. the ingredients, I think. Yeah, it's just in, in a soft flour tortilla, oh. and these are whole grain. Doesn't that smell good? It smells amazing. And it, it's, so, it's so natural, too. Then we're going to take what we made, which is this beautiful mixture of our peppers and onions. That's my favorite thing about Mexican food right there. Is it really? Oh, yes. That's my favorite. You're, I especially love the onions with a burnt. Yeah, I, mean, I know. Look at them, huh? Uh, you, you, you're like uh, me. I swear. It's exactly my favorite part. I mean, I will, part. like, pick through the cast iron pan and look specifically for the black onions. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like an addiction. I swear, it's like you're a reincarnation <laughs> of me at a young age. This is almost frightening. <laughs> no, I mean that. I'm, I'm not making that up because, I mean, you can't make something like that up. Let me get these extra jalapenos off of here. We'll get all this extra plate we're out of here. All right, that looks like nice. like to try and keep everything a little bit organized. Okay, so we've got our beautiful dish there. I'm going to take and put some of that incredible salsa that you made in each of these cups. And it really does smell good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the lemon, a little bit of jalapeno, the lime is like hitting you full fledged in the nostrils. Yep. I mean, you, 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 yeah, I know, you're getting it, huh? <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do is on each plate, we're going to put a little bit of our relish on one side. Look oh, at that, wow. man, coming out. Coming out hot. Enough for you right here. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna give you all the rest. <laughs> you, said, you said you were hungry. <laughs> so. I mean, I might even just ignore the taco and just eat the relish. And then we're gonna throw a little bit of our shredded lettuce here. Wow. Shredded lettuce over here, and I actually got a little extra right here. 
You've gone beyond, above and beyond on these plates, Chef. And then you got to have a little bit of sour cream, mm -hmm. and this is a fat-free sour cream. So that way you feel like you're really <laughs> getting that Mexican mm -hmm. feel. And I tell you what, gang, oh. you get to try it. Oh, wow. I mean, all right, I need yeah, a, take that spoon, spoon and just kind of mix it all together. Yeah, there you go. Man, you knew exactly what to do. <laughs> you got to mix a little bit of everything in there because it's so incredibly good. And then, yeah, just no, like, don't worry about down. it. There you go. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be the most <laughs> avid eater we've ever had on the show. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Is it good? Mm -hmm. you, got a, you got a napkin mm -hmm. right over there if you need it. <laughs> I'm a messy eater. That, hey, That's listen, amazing. I, I love that you enjoy the food. Mm -hmm. And I am not just saying this, but absolutely the best partner <laughs> I've ever had on Thank Fit you. to Eat in six years. <laughs> no, no, no question about it. Thank you. This was a blast. I look forward to it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll work together, mm -hmm. and who knows, maybe we'll do a restaurant maybe together so. one day. Thank you for having me, Chef. I've enjoyed it. Absolutely. All right. If you're interested in any of these recipes you see today, visit our webpage at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or join the MPB Facebook page. I would love to thank our guest, Chef Mark Koblenz. I'm your host, Rob Stenson. Eat well. <laughs>